Minecraft has beautiful landscapes, unique mobs, and an aesthetic that no other game quite captures. Oftentimes, when trying to show off our creations, it doesn't have the flow and pizzazz as others seem to pull off. Day or night, people love pizzazz. In today's video, we're going to show you how to turn footage like this into footage like this. How to make your cinematics turn from flying around Minecraft to gliding around a world that feels alive. Before we jump in, if you want to create these cinematic shots alongside Ooh. friends, check out Bicect Hosting. We offer services around the world, 24 seven support that can help with any problem and a handsome sounding YouTuber that brings you content weekly. Sign up today at bisecthosting.com or check out the link in the description. There are a couple different ways that you can get cinematic shots in Minecraft. We're first gonna show you a quick and easy way to get shots like this. And then we're gonna show you more advanced ways to get cinematic shots by using the replay mod. Let's first jump into the easy way to make cinematic shots in Minecraft. I want to do a video about the Ender Dragon, and I want a cinematic shot of him flying around his base. So here I am watching him fly around, and I could just, of course, record just how it is and kind of just watch him go, but I want to make it a little bit more cinematic than that. There's a few things we can change to make this look a little better. First, we're going to click Escape and go into the options. We're going to turn our FOV from 90 down to 50. That really kind of brings in the camera and lets you see not as much to the sides, but brings you forward a little bit more. I also want to click the key bind to turn on my cinematic camera. Now this isn't on by default. If you go to options and controls, you go to key binds and you find where it says toggle cinematic camera. Go ahead and key bind that. And we can go ahead and hit that key bind. So we now, when we're looking around, we're kind of looking around a little slower and a little smoother. One final thing we're going to do is we want to turn off our HUD. So we're going to click F1 by default, and that will turn off our heads up display. That way, the only thing that is showing on screen is going to be the Ender Dragon flying around and us following the Ender Dragon with our cinematic camera. You can also do all of these things and add a shader to any of your scenes to really make the lighting come together. If you want the ultimate control over your cinematic scenes in Minecraft, the best way to do so is with the replay mod. The replay mod allows you to play the game in real time and doesn't just record what you are doing and what you're seeing, but everything around you. So you can really play with every scene. To run the replay mod, you first have to have Fabric running on your Minecraft client. You then drag in the replay mod into your mods folder and you're ready to start recording your world. Once you have a recording that you would like to use, from the main menu, choose the replay viewer button and choose which footage you would like to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. Hey, how you doing, love mama? Let me whisper in your ear. Once you load into your replay, there will be quite a lot of options and we won't go over everything, but I'll give you the basics. Moving around in the world is similar to Minecraft with the WASD keys, and you can hit the T key to access all the features within the replay mod. You can hit the top left play button to play the scene that you recorded, and you can change the speed by changing the slider here right next to the play button. You can also skip to a specific moment in the replay by choosing a different spot in the timeline above. The timeline below that is another timeline that's going to be used for the actual rendering of the scene that you're going to be playing. So for this scene, I want to have a shot of these frogs jumping on this mountain as we go over it. I'm first going to use the top timeline to skip to the scene where we see the frogs jumping on the mountain. I'm going to zoom out and down the mountain to start my scene. I also don't want my character in this scene, so I can actually hit the B key and make him non-visible. That way I don't have to worry about him getting in the shot. I want our scene to start at the bottom of this hill, so I'm going to add a position keyframe, and that is going to say the camera is going to start here. I'm also gonna add a time keyframe, which means the camera is going to start at this point in the timeline. I wanna move the camera up and around this mountain so you can see the frogs jumping as I come through the scene. Now that I have the position of where I want my camera to be next, I need to place another keyframe further in the bottom timeline. The bottom timeline shows how long this is going to go when you render this out. So I'm going to move this timeline to 10 seconds and add another position keyframe. That means the camera is first going to start at the bottom of the mountain and within 10 seconds is going to get to this next keyframe. If right now we just added another time keyframe to this position, all that would happen is the frogs would be standing still and the world would not be moving at all. So we want to go to the top timeline and move 10 seconds within this timeline so that is a natural time. There's 10 seconds in the rendering, there's 10 seconds in the world that's moved. Once we've moved that top timeline, we can now add a time keyframe to this position. That means that the world will move for 10 seconds and so will this camera as it goes up the mountain. 
once we have our keyframes in place, we can hit the play button to preview what this would look like once we render this scene. We like this preview, so we're going to go ahead and render out this scene. From here, we're going to click the render camera path button. And there is a lot of settings. You can change a lot of stuff. We're not going to go over everything in this video, but for the most part, you can change your rendering and your bit rate, and you can choose what you would like either of those to be. Once you have that ready, just click the render button. Once that's finished rendering, we can open our video folder and view our creation. That's going to be it for us at Bicycle Toasting. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions on videos you would like to see, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.